Yo, I'm back at it, it's Dre, and this is my second video on attempting to beat sync speed with Flash. So let's go ahead, take it to the test, see if I'm right this time on how to beat sync speed. Check it out. Okay, for this test, I'm using the Nikon D7000 along with my Cowboy Studio wireless triggers. Now, of course, you can use any brand of wireless triggers you have, but the reason why I'm starting with the wireless triggers is because you have to respect sync speed when using your wireless triggers. Now, this shot right here, all black. I want to make sure I'm getting no ambient light in the frame, and that setting right there was a 250th of a second at f8 ISO 100. So now that I got that, I know I'm getting no ambient light. I'm gonna set up my off-camera flash and set it for full power. So the trigger on the camera will trigger the off-camera flash at full power when I press the shutter button. Quick test, let's go. The first picture I'm gonna take is at 1 250th of a second at f8. ISO 100, here it is. I think it's a little dark on that picture because I want to make sure this is a nice clear test so I'm going to crease my aperture, I'll open it up to f5.6. Now here's 5.6, it's nice and white, I'm getting no shutter bars, no black bars at the bottom. One three twentieth of a second, as you can see I got a little black bar is starting to come in. Next shot is at one five hundredth of a second. The black bar is covering most of the shot. So we know you cannot use wireless triggers with this test. Basically, when you use a wireless trigger, you have to respect your sync speed of your camera, and that's what that's all about. Okay, so now I have the on-camera flash on the camera, and it's an SB600. I have it pointed towards the off-camera flash that I'm going to use to take the picture. I'm setting my on-camera flash to 164th power. That's the SB600, and I'm going to take a shot. And right now, that's 1 250th of a second, fully lit. So let's go ahead and move it to 1 500th of a second. Now there it is, I am above sync speed. I don't have any black bars, but it is a little darker. So the next shot, I'm gonna take at 1 1,000th of a second. It's about the same, the same brightness on that. No black bars, so everything is working, but I don't have the same power as below sync speed. Now this is 1 200th, excuse me, 1 2,000th of a second. And it's a little darker than the picture before at 1,000th of a second. Here's 1 4,000th of a second. That one is quite dark and virtually, virtually unusable. So let's go ahead and bring it up to 1 8,000th of a second. As you can see right here, it is really pitch black. And for some reason, although I am just changing my shutter speed, why is the flash power diminishing? Okay, so now I'm gonna open up the aperture all the way, 1.8, there we have it. It's slightly better than the 1 8,000th of a second, but it's still kind of dark. 1 4,000th of a second right here. Eh, a little better than the 1 8,000th of a second, but I am getting slightly lighter as I slow down the shutter speed. So let's go ahead and set the shutter to 1 2,000th of a second, and boom, slightly lighter than using 1 4,000th of a second. So for the last shutter speed, I'm just gonna bring it down to 1 800th of a second, see what we get. There it goes, and that's slightly lighter than the 1 2,000th of a second. Now remember, when you adjust shutter speed, it should have no effect when using flash, because using flash is like two exposures. Your shutter speed adjusts the ambient light, and your aperture adjusts the flash power. Okay, so now I wanna do a test where I'm just testing out high speed sync only, 1 250th of a second at 1.8. It is nice and bright. All flashlight right there, there is no ambient light in that setting, and here's 1 500th of a second. Still nice and bright, one stop brighter, and it's exactly the same. Let's go to 1 1,000th of a second, and I do see it diminishing a little bit, but it's still nice and bright. 1 2,000th of a second, one stop brighter, and it's a little bit darker, not quite a stop. 1 4,000th of a second right here, and it's a lot darker, definitely significant, and 1 8,000th of a second, quite significant from 1 250th of a second. Okay, so there you have it. There's my test on flash sync speed. Now, my previous video when I did this test, I was wrong. I, I used the wireless trigger to try to achieve the same thing, but you can't do it. You have to use 
on camera flash and have your off camera flash set, set to slave mode. That way it will work, but it doesn't work quite as good at just using regular high speed sync. So that was kind of where I took it. I, I, I realized I was wrong. I read the, did the test and realized it does work, but then I compared it against high speed sync and I find that the high speed sync results are better than using the on camera flash to trigger another off camera flash uh, via the slave mode to make uh, to light your image. So there you have it. There's my test. Thank you, Andrew from Beyond Photography. He runs a great channel over there. That's where I got inspired to run such a test. Um, he did the test first and I checked it out. I totally botched it and did it wrong and did a video about it, but it is correct. I had some people get on the channel and tell me, hey, you gotta do it this way. You gotta do it exactly the way he said it. This time I did it exactly the way he said it. I did get results, but the results are just not quite the results that I was looking for. Uh, for such tests. So if I ever need to go beyond flash sync speed, when outdoors especially, I will uh, most likely just go ahead and use the high speed sync. Now, you do lose a lot of power when using high speed sync because the flash is like pop, 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 pop. You can't see it, but that's what it's doing. So therefore, it's taking up a lot of power and you just don't get the power you need when you're shooting the sync speed. So there you have it. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Dre. Be sure to catch the last video when I was talking about ranking your website. You know, you gotta have those keywords in there to help improve your red, your website. Get known, be in those Google results so people can find you. Don't be just undercover. You can't have a nice website if nobody sees it. Thanks for watching again. I'm Dre, EMIPL.